Welcome to Weasel Jaw Digital. And today we're going to be going over some of the finer points of the Y Wing and some of the possible builds that you may find useful in your flight time. So, this is the Y Wing. It is a lot sturdier than your A Wing, it's a little sturdier than the X Wing, a little weaker than your support ships. Uh, it's got a lot of shields, again, way more than the A-Wing, a little bit more than the X-Wing, a little bit less than your support ships. It is designed specifically for anti-capital ship battle, and that's how we're going to primarily be setting this up. I will show you an anti-fighter build that is interesting and is fun to play, but it's probably not the most effective build to use. So, to start off with, Let's look at our primary weapon systems. There is, of course, the standard laser cannon. Decent DPS, good rate of fire, decent ammo capacity, range of 1,000 meters. This allows you to engage in combat at fairly long range and do a considerable amount of damage. Now, it's a slow firing weapon. It makes it fairly easy to kind of track targets but you're never gonna do a high amount of damage in a short period of time. You're never gonna be a huge threat out there with that laser cannon. Now you also have for an option, your ion cannon. Your ion cannon does considerable amount of DPS to shields and to knock out um, ship systems. Ammo capacity is fairly good, rate of fire is good. Range again is a thousand meters, it's pretty impressive. Now ion weapons do a lot less damage to hull though. So while you may knock out a fighter with this weapon, you're not gonna have an easy time actually finishing off unless you have other systems to use. Next up is our rotary cannons. Now the guided rotary cannon is actually not a bad choice if you have a trouble keeping your crosshairs lined up on the target or properly leading targets. The guided rotary cannon reduces your damage significantly. You're making a sacrifice there, but for it, you're getting the auto aim capability. That allows you to just get them close to the center of your crosshairs and fire away. Um, if you're bad with your aiming, this is a good way to, to make up for it. Keep in mind that it is a rotary cannon, so it does have a one second wind up time. You're never gonna be able to use this rotary cannon to hit targets that are just flying quickly by in the distance. Um, if someone's coming at you straight on, it's going to be tough to get that cannon wound up and firing on them before it's too late. This is a better weapon for when you have them um, at mid-range and you have a good bead on them or when you're tailing someone. The heavy rotary cannon is unlike the other one, is not guided. This rotary cannon does a considerable amount of damage. Shoots fast, has a good ammo capacity, range of a thousand meters, does have the one second wind up time, but it does a lot of damage. This is a pretty solid weapon system. Again, if they're flying by you quickly, you're not gonna have time to get this on target. But for anyone where you can get this on target, it's an amazing weapon system. Um, for our purposes, this is going to be the weapon we're going to put on this bomber. Guaranteed to satisfy. We'll come back to our auxiliary stuff in a second. Now, for our uh, countermeasures, we have three to choose from. We have the particle burst, which is a static defense. You launch their particle burst. It has a 200 meter range. It's basically chaff for incoming missiles. It only lasts for three seconds, has a nine second cooldown, only has three uses. The only time this is really going to save you is if the person firing a missile at you is directly behind you. You fire off your particle burst, you continue flying in a straight line. Any other situation, the missile coming in from the side, the missile coming in from in front of you, this isn't going to help you. So not one of my favorites. You also have the sensor jammer has a four second duration where it breaks all locked on missiles and makes it so that no one can target you with missiles for those four seconds. It does have a 26 second cooldown and can only be used once. Again, not my favorite. I like the Seeker Warheads. 750 meter range, 
It can take out two missiles at the same time. It has a 12 second cooldown, which is fairly quick for defensive measures, and has a f ammo capacity of four. I use these things a lot. The Seeker Warheads are great. Once that missile warning comes up, um, you can almost always just pop these and it'll take care of the problem for you. Now, the hull has a couple really interesting choices. The first one is the deflector hull. This one increases your shields while lowering your health. Shields are valuable because they can recharge. And a lot of times when I'm running my bombers in anti-capital ship configurations, I'm running shields as my primary source for energy. So, you know, this is going to be good. You're going to be able to buff them even more. When you start recharging them, you have more health regeneration, basically. So it can be useful. Keep in mind, though, that you have more health than shields to begin with. And that means your sacrifice of 35% health is actually greater than your gain in shields. Um, my napkin math shows me that the difference is around 100. So your overall loss of health between shields and health is going to be 100 less. Um, but you're going to focus more of that power to shields, which do regenerate passively. It's not a bad choice. Um, not the choice I usually make, though. The Reinforced Hull is another one that has, you know, it's another strong option. Um, has some potential. Increases your max health by 60% while lowering your acceleration and your maneuverability. Now, this is already a very slow, non-accelerating, non-maneuverable ship. So you're making some sacrifices in areas where you already don't have strength, but then you're adding a considerable amount of health. And it is considerable. It is close to 800 health added. Um, it's more than the health that an A-wing has. It is a significant amount of health. If you're making strictly just bombing runs, this isn't bad. You don't need a lot of maneuverability for bombing runs. Um, you don't need a lot of acceleration for bombing runs. You need speed, and you need health to stay alive and do the most damage. So this is a potential option. The option I always go with, though, is the dampener hull. You lose 10% of your health, but you have a lot of health on this ship to give up, so it's okay. It also increases the lock time against your ship by 100% makes it much harder for people to lock onto you. This being a slow, clunky, large ship, it's often pretty easy for enemies to get locks on you. So increasing the amount of lock time while having some good defensive um, systems is what will keep you alive in this battle for a long time. So again, I'm typically gonna go with the dampener hull, but the other two are not bad options. Again, you're gonna trade a little bit of health for a little bit less in shields, but that does regenerate. And here you're just gonna get a big chunk of health to keep you alive in the battle. Shields again has some interesting choices. There's the overloaded shield, which is really not a good idea. Um, you reduce the damage you take from both lasers and missiles, but your shield gener regeneration is greatly reduced greatly reduced, which means that big chunk of shields you have is going to take much longer to regenerate, which leaves you exposed. And if your shields are ever completely depleted, they're not going to recharge at all. So then you're just sacrificing those shields altogether. Not a good choice for this. The Lornor Ray Shield, however, is not horrible. Primary damage taken from blasters, lasers, is reduced by 25% which is pretty good because you're going to take a lot of laser hits in this ship. The auxiliary damage taken is increased, however, by 50%, and that is somewhat problematic. Um, again, you are a big, slow ship. You're an easy target. Even with your dampening hull, people are going to be able to easily get locks on you. Um, now, you do have your countermeasures, but 
any missiles that do get past that are going to be doing considerable amounts of damage to you. So I don't find that the trade-off is worth it for me. Now the conversion shield, however, is kind of interesting. When your shields reach zero, it exchanges ammo for a brief but nearly invincible barrier. I find, especially when attacking capital ships, this comes in very handy to get me back out of range of the capital ship to recharge my shields before I pay, make another pass. So this tends to be the one that I like to take. For engines, there's nothing really amazing. Um, we will talk about them though here. The unstable sublight engine increases your speed and acceleration, which are already things that are not great on this ship. But it lowers your health and shields by 20% each. That is a sacrifice that is just not worth taking. You're giving up too much health, too much shields for a little bit of speed and acceleration. The kind of fun side of things though is when you do die, it's a massive explosion that can damage other surrounding ships. But they have to be in range of the explosion. And I often find that you're not gonna have that kind of situation where that really pays off. Your Quadex jet engine increases the rate that you gain your engine boost, lowers the amount of time you have to use the engine boost. So it depletes really quickly when you use it. This allows you to get lots of shorter boosts um, because it regens so quickly. Not bad, but I don't spend a lot of time boosting my engines in the Y-Wing, so it's not the most useful. The slam engine is the one potential option for you um, that I think has some ability to be useful. It boosts the passive charge rate by 40% for your engine boost. It also gives you a passive boost charge generation no matter how your power is set up as long as you have some power in your engines. Now a lot of times I will fly this thing maxing out shields but I still leave some in the engines. That allows you to keep charging boost which allows you to do drift turns and I have some handy little guides here to show you what that means. Now usually you have your capital ship that you're trying to attack. You come in and this is I don't have a Y-wing to show you but you come in with your ship and you make your attack run. Now usually what happens once you make your attack run you have to make a long arc away from the ship and make a large wide turn before you can make another attack run. Now this leaves you exposed when you're out here to get those attacks on you before you can get back and aim at your target again. Now being able to do lots of drift turns means you make your attack run and you just fire off a drift turn and then you make another attack run, drift turn, attack run, drift turn. So the slam engine gives you the ability to do a really interesting maneuver where you can keep a lot of firepower on your target. And there is some benefit to that. The problem is you take a big hit in speed. Your speed is already one of the slowest in the game. And it's going to take you a long time to even get out to do any damage to enemy ships. So I kind of feel this one isn't that great. Your loss in speed means that you're never going to get to the battle where you want to be doing that damage. And those little passive boosts aren't really going to come into play until you get there anyways. But it's, it's a potential. I can see it being used by good pilots. I can see it being having a high potential for adding a lot of damage um, to capital ships. So I wouldn't fault anyone for taking the slam engine at all. I just stick with a with a standard sublight engine. Now, where the Y-Wing really shines is the amount of auxiliary weapon systems that are available. There are a lot, and they give you a lot of variety and a lot of combinations that you can use. Now, we're building this ship primarily to attack capital ships. So, the automatic ion cannon is a neat little turret-based weapon. That's that little... 
take something else here. If you look on the top of the cockpit, when you activate this, you'll see like there are those two little cannons that come up. Those are automatically controlled. They automatically target the closest enemy ships, and they shoot ion weaponry at them. It's a little bit of damage, but it also drains shields of enemy ships. Not a huge thing um, for the Imperials, but it can cause ion effects to them and could possibly shut down ships. What I find it's good for is just a deterrent. Someone's tracking you or you're going into a large group of enemies, just turning that on gives you some extra damage, can possibly shut down a ship or two, can detour someone from you know, following you on your tail and doing damage to you because they're being shot at by this automatic cannon. However, for attacking capital ships, not the most useful. The multi-lock missile system is a great anti-fighter missile system, but is not that great for taking on capital ships. The, uh, the missiles do good damage. I, I will not deny that. 750 damage per missile. You can line up to four shots. Keep in mind, though, that there's a 15-second cooldown before you can use this again. And it locks on four times. If you're going to use all four against a capital ship, that's a four-second lock before you can fire those. And locks are required to fire these missiles. So, four-second lock, 15-second cooldown. That means from the start of your first shot to the start of your second shot is going to be 19 seconds. That is a long time to wait. And then you're going to have to wait another four seconds before you can even fire that second blast. So, I'm not a huge fan of these. Not for fighting capital ships, anyways. The Emergency Assault, assault Shield is a neat little device. Um, it lowers incoming damage to you by 90%. It only lasts for 3 seconds, though, and has a 20-second cooldown. It is nice for making attack runs on capital ships. However, it's long cooldown, limited duration, makes it so it's not all that useful. And the Y-Wing shields can hold up pretty well under sustained fire anyways. The composite beam cannon is a great weapon. It has a max DPS of 1,000 damage per second. It does take a second and a half to wind up or power up and charge. It lasts for three seconds, though. Now, if you understand that 1,000 damage per second, duration of three seconds, you can put a lot of hurt on a target very quickly. It's got a range of 1,000 meters, so you can start doing that damage from far away. And it's got a 10 second cooldown, which honestly isn't that long. You'll be surprised at how often you can fire this weapon at enemy capital ships because it does recycle fairly fast. There is a maneuverability penalty where you lose 90% of your maneuverability when you have this firing. And that means you're not gonna be dodging any missiles, you're not gonna be dodging any enemy fire, you're gonna be basically a sitting duck but I find it's often worth it. So that's the first big auxiliary weapon I'm gonna throw on here. Now you also have the ion bombs. These are great against capital ships that still have their shields up. These do 4,000 damage. Um, rate of fire is one per second. They have a 200 meter range, so you have to be almost right on top of the enemy ship. And you have ammo capacity of 10. These launch downwards, they do a considerable amount of damage to shields. If you can get off all 10, you're going to be doing 40,000 ion damage to a target. And that's going to be enough to strip a lot of shields from any of those capital ships. You also have Seeker Mines. You drop one of these mines, any enemy fighter that comes within 200 meters is then attacked by this strong homing um, Seeker Mine that does 900 damage. My only problem with it, it only lasts 10 seconds. It's great in a dogfight situation if someone is chasing you. You can drop this, it'll seek to them, it'll do a lot of damage, possibly knock them out. But in most other cases, I don't find it all that useful. Your Goliath missile um, has a really nice area of effect when it blows up. Its direct damage is 1,000 damage. Its area of effect is a 200 meter area. Lock-on time is 2 seconds does have a thousand meter range 
The cooldown is very long at 15 seconds, and you only have three shots with it. I often find that the enemies are not concentrated enough that the area of effect actually does much for you. The one example um, where it does is when you're taking out those AI-controlled TIE Fighters that are flying in formation. You hit the center one, you can often blow up or at least damage all of them from one Goliath missile. But that's taking on AI, which is not really my biggest threat or concern. The Proton Torpedo requires a lock, cannot be fired under minimum range, and has weak homing. Not good for anti-starfighter combat. Cooldown's not too bad at 10 seconds. It has an interesting range. You cannot lock and fire it under 500 meters. You cannot lock over 1500, but it does lock from long range. So if you have an exposed capital ship that already the shield's are already down, you can start locking on at 1500 meters, two second lock time. You're going to be firing before you even get to 1000 meters. Because of that, it's not bad. The 4,000 damage hits really nice and hard. But there is going to be another 12 seconds before you can get a second shot off. So it's not my favorite. It's not the greatest. Um, I typically won't use it. So my second weapon tends to be the proton bombs. You can fire these off one a second. You have five of them. Um, range is 200 meters, so again, you got to be almost right on top of the ship. Damage is 1,100. If you can get under a Star Destroyer shields, you can drop these straight onto the hull early on. It does a lot of damage. Um, it's great against any unshielded craft. So that's going to be my secondary one. So again, to review, we're going with the Rotary Cannon, the Beam Cannon, the Proton Bomb, Seeker Warheads, Dampener Hull, Conversion Shield, and our Standard Engine. Now I'm going to set up the second one quickly also. Again, I'm going to go with the, uh, the Rotary Cannon. It's a possibility. Ion Cannon is a possibility also. I'm going to keep the same Auxiliary. So we're going to go with the Beam Cannon. We're going to go with the Bombs. For countermeasures, of course, we're going to go with the Seeker Warheads. I like the Dampener Hull. And I like the Conversion Shields. And the Standard Engine. Now, the one difference I will do here, because this is how our how other ship is set up exactly, is to drop that Rotary Cannon, go with the Ion Cannon. This is the ship I'll take out when the enemy capital ships still have shields. And the other one is the one I'll use when the shields have already been taken down. So we're going to go ahead and launch with the Ion Cannon version. To give you an example of what this ship can do. And we're going to go ahead and pop up a Raider. And we will approach... Again, not a very fast ship. So it does take you a while to get into the engagement range. But once it does, that's when the fun starts. And again, I'm playing on the easiest setting here just to demo this stuff for you. So I do have more defensive countermeasures and more bombs than normal. So he's coming into range. Beam cannon strips off a lot of shields. Now I'm going to switch to my shields to increase the boost. In a normal battle situation, you hit him with the ions, hit him with the beam, and then you're going to accelerate, and you're going to drop your bombs. You're going to accelerate away, and then you're going to slow down to half speed, make your turn. And you're gonna come back, and your beam cannon's gonna be ready for your next assault. We're gonna come down here just so we can reload here quick. 
so that's that's the general tactic there. Um, you're not relying on your ion cannons. They're going to do some damage for you. Um, you have a good res reserve of ammo. So they will last a good long time. Even when you don't have them boosted. Um, if you watch here, you get sustained fire for quite some time. Alright. We're going to bring out a flagship here. No. We're looking at stripping off shields here. So we're going to power our shields. We're going to fire off our beam. And we want to get under the shields and drop our bombs. If you get under the shields and you can hit their shield generators or other important parts, you want to. Again, this is the easiest setting, so it's not like that's how that would normally go. The ion weapons do affect ship systems. So you can actually disable shields before you destroy them. That doesn't feel right. Am I not in the right spot? I am not low enough on the hull. So if we hit this with the ion weapons enough, you'll see it does affect their system. Can't even get a map. So their targeting system has been disabled. So using the ions is not even a bad idea against their ships. Alright, so we're going to switch then to our primary loadout. So after we've removed the shields of a ship, and we get blown up, any of these capital ships. Um, that includes the Raider too. These are great ships to just take straight out in a game and target the enemy Raider. It's a very effective ship for that. So we get into range, and then we're going to open up with our big old Gatling laser. Get into range, drop the bombs. We're going to launch that laser system and hit him with the rotary cannon as much as possible. Always make sure that you have your shields charging to full. So that's the use of the two versions of the Y-Wing Bomber. One set up to to, to specifically take out um, shields on the capital ships, um, and then the other one used to just damage the capital ships. Now, when you're dealing with the Raider, I wouldn't use the anti-shield one. The shields go down fairly easy on a, on a Raider, um, so I would just go with the straight-up damage-based Y-Wing instead of the Ion Y-Wing. In that case. 
Some people might be thinking, oh, well, why don't you take the Ion Bombs on the Ion version? I get what you're looking at. I get what you're saying. But I find that that's not really all that useful except against the Star Destroyer. And that often leaves you with less damage when you're dealing with those mid-range ships. So the other thing we want to look at is adjusting this for one other purpose. And that's for anti-starfighter use. It's not something I recommend, but it is something that has some potential. You're going to want to go with the rotary cannon for that. Um, over here, I would go with the ion cannon. Not only for deterrence, um, but it helps just do some damage and whatnot. In your right slot, you're going to want to take those multi-lock missiles. Again, not great against capital ships, really pretty effective against fighters. Countermeasures, we're going to keep the Seeker Warhead. In this case, we're definitely going to want the uh, the Dampener Hull. We're going against fighters primarily. We're worried about those secondary lock-ons. Shields, in this case, um, the Conversion Shield or the Ray Shield are both good choices. Um, again, I prefer the Conversion Shield. They strip your, your shields, you get one last burst. Um, Ray shield's not bad, either against fighters or against capital ships. I mean, a lot of the capital ship damage that's coming in is going to be primary weapons. I'm going to stick with the conversion. Your engines, you're not going to want to do anything different here. You're going to want to keep your sublight engines. The slam engines might not be bad, honestly. Um, again, you're going to be able to do lots of those drift turns, which will maybe help you keep the advantage in those situations. So definitely a potential if you like that. You got it. So we're going to hop into a training match quick. Just so we can take a look at this Y-Wing in action. So again, we got the rotary cannon, multi-lock missiles, and the automatic turret. So we're going to deploy a squadron with fighters and interceptors. And we can see them off in the distance. We'll get in the range. Start getting those locks. You don't have to wait for four. You only get two locks, that works fine. So you can see that's pretty dangerous against the AIs, but it's also dangerous against other ships. You know, when players are out there too, you can they'll often be traveling in packs. And you can get more than one. That wasn't so hard. They're all over me. Well, the rotary cannon, once you spin it up, is pretty effective. Does a considerable amount of damage. We'll show you the ion here. So you can hear it firing. Now these interceptors are a little hard for it to hit. So we're going to let it recharge. We're going to call in another group of bringing TIE Fighters and TIE Bombers this time. So there's our Bombers. So we've activated it. It's shooting behind us right now. Let's see, it's actually going to deactivate that guy. 
because he can get the hold on him. The rotary cannon is pretty effective. Maneuverability is not the greatest. It's not a great dogfighter. The one thing that gives you a bit of advantage, though, is no one expects the Y-Wing to be a dogfighter. Fighter behind me. So you'll often kind of surprise them when they're not expecting you to be set up for anti-fighter type combat. They're not going to be expecting that. You're going to have the missiles to shoot at them. You're going to have the ion cannon. You're going to have the rotary cannon. They're not going to be expecting that kind of output of damage against their fighters. And it is going to be a bit of a surprise. However, you sacrifice literally all of your anti-capital ship armaments to be able to do that. Um, so to me it's not a great trade-off because I think there's better ships for fighting the enemy ships than this. Hope you found this information useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll be bringing you more of these.